The first screen that appears is the Integrated Report Viewer Introduction. It contains a brief description on how to navigate the viewer. Click OK to exit the introduction. The first box to the left is the introduction pane, which describes what the Integrated Water Quality Monitoring and Assessment Report is, and also contains a link to the full report. A contact for questions about the report and viewer is also listed here. At any time, left clicking with your mouse cursor allows you to move your map view. In addition, in the top left corner of the map, there are plus and minus icons to zoom in and out, and a home icon to zoom to full extent. The background can be changed with the base maps drop down in the upper right hand corner of the map. For now, we are going to leave the base map on what it is, topographic. The next box on the left side is the layers pane. This contains all streamlines and lake polygons or layers for which you are able to view information. Layers are activated when they have a check mark in the box, which you can turn on and off. The aquatic life impaired and aquatic life supporting layers, as well as others, are already activated, but notice that the check mark is gray. This is because the layers are only viewable when zoomed into adequately, so let's do that here. One way to zoom to a location is to type it into the box in the upper left hand side. You can search for any address, county, or even township using this box. Let's search for Silver Spring Township, PA. And click Enter. Now that I've zoomed into a location, notice that the lines are now visible and the check marks are no longer grayed out. I can expand the layers here and see that the Aquatic Life Impaired Streams layer is red and the supporting layer is green. I can turn on any other layers as desired. Layers must be turned on to view information associated with them in the map. We can also turn on the hydrologic unit code or HUC layer and the municipalities layer. At this point, I could just navigate the current map displayed. However, there are also other search mechanisms. The next box on the left hand side is the find pane. Search functions are in this pane. You can limit your search to any layer. However, if you're unsure, what assessments are on a stream of interest, you can just search under streams all. There is one choice for searching for lakes. I'm going to search for a specific stream. Next I must type in a stream name. Starting to type in a name will bring up choices so I can select it from the list as I type. There is also an option to view exact matches, and that can be checked, and a spatial filter can be applied to the current viewing extent. I'm going to leave the filter on the entire map. In addition, if I've already completed a search, there is an option to add my current search to the existing results. If desired, you can also export the entire statewide data set for the integrated report. If searching for a specific type of impairment, say aquatic life impaired, more search options show up. You can narrow your search down using the assessment ID if you know it, the impairment source, cause, category, and even the flow line identification the NHD flow line com ID. Like I said, I'm going to search for a specific stream, in this case, Conedogwinnet Creek. The map will zoom to my stream of interest. At the bottom of your view, a table of results will populate. This can be examined and sorted various ways by clicking on the field names.
In addition, the table can be exported for use outside the viewer. The export button is on the right hand side. If an entry is clicked, the map will zoom to this feature. Clicking on a feature will bring a pop-up of the assessments. Note that in order to view all assessments and all source cause combinations, the arrow at the top right of the pop-up must be used. Also note in our example that there are multiple stream uses in the pop-up. Again, if the layers of interest are not selected to the left, they will not appear in the map. To clear out your selection, go to Clear, Clear All, and X out of the table. In addition, there is the option to select by shape and with a buffer around your shape. One must select the assessment of interest, select a buffer, and decide the way the features will be selected. I'm selecting freehand polygon. And drawing a shape around my area of interest. I'm going to choose a buffer of five miles Then I can add this to the existing results or create a new search. I'm going to create a new search. This has selected all impaired streams within five miles of my polygon. Again, I can use the X to exit out of this selection. The next box on the left-hand side is the measurement pane. This gives you different ways to measure something on the map. I can choose square miles and draw a box, miles and draw a line, or degrees, and any point clicked on the map will show the latitude and longitude of the point. I'm going to measure a line here. Say I want to know pr exactly how long this tributary is. I can draw a line to trace it and see the result. This says it is approximately 1.07 miles. Lastly, there is a pane to print the results of your searches. I can give the map a title and determine what format and layout I want it to be. In addition, there are some more detailed options for print settings under the Settings drop-down. If you have any immediate inquiries, there is also a Help icon on the top right-hand corner of the screen, the question mark. This will show you how to navigate the viewer. Of course, if you have any additional questions or comments, please contact the Water Quality Division at the listed contact information under Introduction. Thank you and happy mapping.